what a joy it takes to grace your screen again this day that the Lord has made. We want to trust God that he will illuminate our hearts by reason of his word as we study today again and learn at the feet of Jesus. I'd like to read a scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 following. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Verse 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. As we run through the course of this new year, this is the very last Sunday in the very first month of the year, January. We are trusting God that today that the word of the Lord that we will find and that we will pay attention to will bring life to us and cause us to experience health in all ramifications of our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Like I always say, if there is any instrument via which God will help a man, it is via the instrument of his word. And may the Lord bless us as we listen to his word today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll continue our discussion on the sub team, the Lord God and the reign of peace. And the sub team, that's our team. Our sub team says, means of God's revelation to mankind. Remember, we have discussed dreams. We have discussed God revealing himself to us via his word, the written word. That when a man reads and catches the rema, that man becomes a man set for Sussex. Today, we will take it a notch further by looking at means of God's revelation to mankind via his prophets. And I have in the studio our fathers in God, our resource persons. By my right is the Reverend Canon Jacob Ibitom. He is the vicar, Chapel of the Resurrection, NTA, here in Abuja Diocese. Father in God, welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Good day, viewers. And then by my left is the Reverend Ezike Ekweme. Is a priest at the Church of the Advent here in Abuja Diocese. Father and God, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. God bless you, brothers and sisters, as you listen to the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our aims will be to discuss the office of a prophet, to differentiate between God's prophets, carnally minded God's prophets, and false prophets. Thirdly, we will be discussing the importance of obeying the prophets of God. There are gains that are created to a man when a man heeds to prophecy, godly counsels. And so we'll be discussing all those. Quickly, in our tradition, I'd like to take a background test. First Kings chapter 22, 1 to 28. Sit tight, invite your family members. Let's learn together at the feet of Jesus. I read from the New King James Version of the Scripture. Now, three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth in Gilead is ours? But we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria. So he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such thing. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of China, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, Thus says the Lord, 
With this you shall guard the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call my car spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophet with one accord encouraged the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak encouragement. And my car said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, My car, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So the king said to him, How many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that you would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Then Micah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chinana, went near and struck my car on the cheek and said, Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? And my car said, Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. So the king of Israel said, Take my car and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison, and feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction, until I come in peace. But Micah said, If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Take heed, all you people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such an interesting long read. But it's important that we appreciate, as we discussed, as we'll be discussing shortly, that context, why the word of the Lord came via a prophet at such a time in the life of Israel and Judah. Quickly, we go through our introduction. According to Exodus 4, verse 12, Father and God, Reverend Ezekiel, you help us read that scripture. Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12. Now, go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. Awesome. Exodus 4.12. According to Exodus 4.12, a prophet is God's mouthpiece. Some people will say he's the oracle of God. He mm. speaks forth God's mind. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament, prophets of God deliver the word of God with authority. Mm. In our text today, we can see a clear difference between two prophets of God and a false one. However, we find godly and carnal prophets of God in the Bible. How then can we differentiate between the two? Our study guide will beam such light to this and other related issues. You know, one thing came out clearly from our second aim for this study. There are two prophets of God. There are carnally minded prophets of God whose God is their belly, who are out there just to feed fat from gullible persons. And then there are, of course, false, false prophets. prophets. So these are clear delineations, and the Lord will help us to understand as we discuss. So, Canon, sir, yes, let's sir. start from you, sir. Yes, sir. From the study today, mm. who is a prophet? That is one. Yes. And then compare with First Kings 22, verse 7. Okay. And then Hosea chapter 12, 10, and Amos 3, 7. Okay. You help us with that first King 22, 7 canon. And then Reverend Ezekiel, Hosea 12, 10. And then canon, I will get back to you again to also help us with Amos 3, 7. We take those scriptures and then we we'll respond to the question. Okay. First okay. Kings first 22, 7. Kings chapter 22, verse 7. 
And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? Mm. And then Hosea 12.10. Hosea 10. I sent my prophets to warn you with many visions and parables. Can answer. Amos 3, 7. Amos chapter 3, verse 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Awesome. So who is a prophet? It's good we we'll build that understanding. Okay, in addition to what has been put on paper here, uh, let me state clearly that a prophet is someone who speaks by divine inspiration. Awesome. Uh, if I go further from there, we will also say a prophet is someone who communicates the truth under divine influence. Awesome. And then, if we will still add to that as a prophet, we will say a prophet is somebody who speaks what has been revealed to him by God. Awesome. That's a prophet. Awesome. So two things are coming out clearly. What yes. has been revealed to him by God. Yes, sir. And then he speaks under divine influence. Yes, influence. Which means it's possible for a man to speak outside of divine influence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But a prophet, a true prophet, prophet. in that sense, is a man yeah. or a woman who speaks under the influence of yeah, God. So let's compare First Kings... 22.7, Hosea 12.10, and then Amos 3.7. I think Amos 3.7 said say God will yeah, not do anything yeah, except yeah, he first yeah, reveals it yes. to So your take on all those yeah, things. So let, let me start with First Kings 22.7. Uh, if we look at you, it was obvious to us that Jehoshaphat knew the difference between pagan prophets and the prophets of God. Yes, sir. And that was what brought about that statement in verse 7, that is there not still a prophet of the Lord here? Jesus. And why was he looking for a prophet mm. of the Lord? Because he was convinced that the prophet of the Lord will say the right thing. Mm. Uh -huh. And that was why he was not looking for the pagan prophet. Jesus. Uh -huh. So, uh, it is obvious again that God gives prophets revelations, mm. visions. And uh, God also gives prophet the, the revelations and visions can be in form of warnings, can be in form of admonitions, mm. and it can be in form of messages of hope, solution to challenges. Awesome. These are things we know that God can give, uh, the revelations God can give to prophets, his awesome. prophets. And then he can give directions on issues of life. Yes, sir. And that was the perception of Jehoshaphat. Why exactly. he said, is there not, not a, a prophet, prophet of God? And with emphasis and then definite. Prophet of God, not just any kind of prophet. Mm. So that's what I think we can get from that First Kings 22.7. Awesome. Let, let, let me say something that, you know, the Bible actually referred to those 400 prophets yeah. as prophets of God or so. They were not pagan prophets, per se. Mm. But these ones, they were under the salary of the king. Mm. That's what we need to know. These are, uh, uh, they were under the, they have been, you know, Bible says, the, the woman says that he who pays the piper, yeah. he takes the tune. He takes the tune. Yeah. These ones, they are being fed by the king. Mm. So they are psychophants. Mm -hmm. So their words, we are, there's a tendency for their words to be of twisted course, to favor the of king. Of course, you are, you are, they are not going to actually speak anything that will be negative. I think we'll brand them as the carnally minded prophets of God. Carnally minded prophets of God. Or, hmm. Of those who are after their belly. Awesome. You know? But the prophets of God, what, who is, because in this topic we are looking at who is a prophet. Mm -hmm. If you read First Kings chapter 16, when the Bible was trying to you know, introduce Elijah, he said it was a man that stands in the presence of God. Mm. You know, pro true prophets of God are the ones who has a deep relationship with God. Mm, they know their, the place their, of His presence. Their life is different from just ordinary persons. They are mindful of God's word. They are not mindful of persons. They don't look at faces. Mm. They speak the mind of God. Awesome. And if you look at uh, Amos chapter 12, verse 10, 
He says, I sent my prophets to warn you mm -hmm. with many visions mm -hmm. and parables. Mm -hmm. So the prophet of God has to speak what God told him, not to please anybody. any man. Mm -hmm. These other 400, they were all speaking to the same the thing so that the king will be happy and applaud them and then give them more money. Awesome. But the prophet of Judah, Hezekiah, he knew. He said, look, this <laughs> is there any no prophet of God? God. You know, the way, the way that scripture is downing on me now, is they are not still. Mm -hmm. I don't know where Israel and Judah were coming from, but I knew mm -hmm. the experience that in chapter 18, Elijah had with the prophets of mm -hmm. Baal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this man came to a point that he needed direction to move. And he was not so fast to move without first having, having not to hear from God. He was very particular that he needed to hear God before he would embark on this virtue. Mm. And child of God, I see God saying something to us already. That step you want to take this year, have you heard the mind of God? Mm. Perhaps via his prophet concerning it. Jehoshaphat said, wait, is there not still a prophet that we, we may inquire what the Lord will have us do? Child of God, God is challenging us. The year is pretty new. The year is quite young. It's a nascent year. We want to trust God that we would get into the habit of hearing from God before we step out. Mm. And any man that believes God for direction will receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amos 3.7, the Lord will not do anything except he reveals it yes. via his prophets. Yes. I still want you to get our take on this. Why I'm saying this because I've had experiences where people going from here, contracting prayers, wanting somebody to speak over their life. Sometimes we finish service and you see people wanting to go to some other places as if what we've done in church is not enough. Yes. In uh, this age yeah, where there is yeah. so many prophecies being thrown about, why do you put it in the context of what the scripture is saying? Yeah, in Amos 3, yeah, yeah, I think in the context uh, when Amos was uh, what he was saying, that God always won his people through prophets. Yes, sir. And uh, before God punishes, he will give warning. And those warnings will come through the prophet. That's the context in which we say, surely mm. the Lord does not do anything without first revealing it so to his servant's prophet. prophet. He was talking about warning people. Mm. And uh, after that warning, people will not have reasons for rationalizing their action. Yes, sir. That is, that is mm. it. Because so many of us, we rationalize our actions. But when God gives, when God wants, before he punishes, you will not be there able no to. Basis yeah, for you. yeah. Without you, there is no excuse for you to rationalize so, and that your is, action. That is, you are in action. So that is the, awesome. the. So, in the present time too, we will not have reasons for rationalizing our actions when God has spoken to us in form of warnings. Awesome. Through His servants. Awesome. Yes, sir. So let me also point out that, quickly, sir. That you know, Bible says in Hebrew chapter. One verse one. You see, in the old days, God mm. spoke to our fathers yeah. through the prophets. But in the recent days, He has spoken to us through His, his son. son. Mm. You know, so the, the role of a prophet mm. in the Old Testament and in the New Testament differs a little bit. Yeah. Because in the Old Testament, it is only the prophet, the king, that has that have the spirit of God, you know, dwelling in them time to time. But in the New Testament, God has done a new thing. So God speaks to us. So, but the role of the prophet, the prophet had to warn us to confirm the word of God also in our life. Exactly. So this idea of people running from one pole to one pillar, mm -hmm. looking for somebody to tell them what is the mind of God. When the mind of God is when already When the mind of God uh, is here. Is here, yeah. Also. When it comes to prophecies, you have the foretelling. Hmm. And the fourth telling. Hmm. The fourth telling is about speaking the word of God. Yes, sir. You, if you look at some of these prophets today, they don't even know the scriptures, but they can foretell. They don't have solution to people. So we should be careful. Awesome. Understand, because the word of God is our standard. It should be our guide. Awesome. Understand, we should not start running from one prophet to the other. Yeah, awesome. I think the takeaway is that God's intention yeah. is that all of us will receive of his spirit. Yes, I remember yeah. the experience of Eda that made that. And when Joshua, Joshua rocks to Moses and say, forbid them because they are speaking. Yeah. He say, no, no. I wish. I wish that all of God's people 
will prophesy. Mm -hmm. Child of God, we'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN's Now Streaming discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Welcome back, child of God. The Lord has helped us thus far on this mount. Mm -hmm. We are looking at means of God's revelation to mankind, and we are looking at God revealing himself to us through his prophets. Mm -hmm. We move straight to question two. Remember, I've been in the studio with our fathers in God before we attempt the questions. Our fathers in God, Reverend Canon Jacob Ibitom and Reverend Ezekiel Ikweme. Welcome Thank to you. the program once again. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Ikweme, sir, examine the prophetic message in 1 Kings 22, 13 to 14. You will help us read that. And differentiate between the prophets of God and carnally minded prophet. I think we tried to delve into that in, in yeah, looking at question bit, one. Yes. So let's spend a little time on that as you respond. First King chapter 22. 13 to 14. 13 to 14. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micah said to him, Look, at all the prophets are pro promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. So differentiate the between the prophets of God and carnally minded prophets, just from this scripture. Well, there is very simple. You know, one thing that is very clear between the pro real prophets of God and the carnally minded prophets mm. is that the prophets of God are mindful of God's presence yes sir they speak what only god tells them to say mm. so this man you know when he when he came to him he said look others are prophesying good things just don't change your mind mm. but the man told him look i'm not answerable to this king jesus this other the other prophet that carnally minded prophet they speak for their for belly their, for their belly and you know we have a lot of Co them in our time today. Conventiousness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Understand, and that is the order of the day today. Jesus, when we meet a lot of all these people, politicians, who are them, governors, you know, they prophesy we to twist them. Word just to suit prophesying them. to a sinner that is well with you. Hmm. When the Bible says that, look, he shall not be well with you, wicked. wicked. Hmm. They don't tell even the wicked to repent from their sin. Hmm. They rather tell them what they want to hear. The other prophets, they were speaking because they are being paid from the king's pocket. But this other prophet is mindful because he has a deep relationship with God. He knows, look at uh, the man uh, in, in, in Numbers. Balaam and Balak. Balaam and Balak. Balak, he too, yeah. Balaam and Balak, he, he ba said, Balak said, look, ba I cannot speak anything except what God tells me. He has found no iniquity in Israel. Uh, he has Jacob. found no iniquity in Israel. There is no enchantment against Even when Jacob. the man, even though Balak Was made really? that compromise because of what he offered him. Mm -hmm. And that's what is actually happening today. The major difference is just stomach and those stomach who are speaking for the mind of God. Awesome. And they are ready to receive the punishment. Of course, we saw here that the king said they should put this man inside the prison. And feed him and with bread, bread of, bread affliction, of affliction, affliction and water of affliction. But the man was not mindful. Because as, when you are with God, you will fear no man. Awesome. When we are with God, you know that at the end, victory will come. Awesome. He was vindicated because he stood for, for the God. truth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's move quickly because of time. Let's get to question three. Can answer. Yes, sir. In the following passages, mention the distinctive features of the prophet of God. You will help us with Second Kings chapter five, fifteen to nineteen quickly. Okay. Reverend Jeremiah chapter one, six to eight. Let's read those. Okay. Second away. Kings chapter five, from verse fifteen to nineteen. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aids, and came and stood before him and said, Indeed. Now, I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servants. But he said, as the Lord lives, 
before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, then if not, please let your servant be given two more loaves of earth. For your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, hmm. but to the Lord. Yet in these things, may the Lord pardon your servants when my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there. And he leans on my hand. And I bow down in the temple of Raymond. And when I bow down <coughs> in the temple of Raymond, may the Lord please pardon your servant in these things. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. Hmm, awesome. You know, when you. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, chapter one 6, to 8. 6 to 8. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I am too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be, I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Canon, sir, yes, sir, from these two passages, the distinctive features of God's prophets are mentioned some reasons for obeying them. Yeah, it's very obvious from that second Kings. Let me start from there that a prophet is consistent. Yes, sir. And uh, in his revelations, he does not mix words. Very consistent with what God has spoken to him. Yes, sir. That is what he speaks. Hmm. Again, it is also obvious that a prophet does not operate double standard. Yes, sir. Uh, from what we are if you are to give the summary. Uh -huh. If a, a man is actually of God and God has given him revelations, he has to stick to it, not operating uh, in double manner. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So that is one thing again we need to get. And then a prophet abides in the presence of God. He does not abide somewhere else. Mm. It is in that God's presence because, as we said earlier, he speaks by divine inspiration. Yes, sir. He communicates under divine influence and mm. he communicates the truth. So if that is applicable to a prophet, then he abides in God's presence. Mm. And he are con uh, the prophets will always acknowledge their inadequacies, well, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah. If we, uh, from where we read again, Jeremiah is there. So they are acknowledged. And then the second part, because of time, the reasons for obeying them is that uh, obedience to God begins with humility. And when a man obeys God, it will always be clear to him that the way of <coughs> God is not the same with the way of man. Awesome. They are not the same. Awesome. And so if the way of God is not the way of man, you will look at it that the way of God is the best way to obey. Awesome. And uh, we must also note from here that reasons for obeying them is that God can accomplish anything uh, his purpose, using anything. Hmm. That thing may look insignificant God is to me as a person. Yeah. It may even uh, look, be on, uh, look at something that is unserious. But God is in it and he wants to accomplish something with it. So that's what Amazing. I can bring out from this place. Awesome. Yeah. Let me just add one thing. That these prophets, they are convinced, of, they have a, a strong conviction about God. Yes, sir. They were called also. Yes, sir. Mm. This place where it was the call of Abraham. They are called and they are convinced about God. Hmm. They are not, they have, they have a strong conviction. Hmm. They are ready even to give their life. Hmm. Understand? Awesome. Then, the secondly, what I pointed out, when uh, uh, the prophet performed that miracle for Naaman, he refused to collect something from him. Now, it is not every time that a prophet of God collects money. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he was. He I talked want, about want, consistency. Yes, yeah. I want us to know, especially some of us, you know, who are always going to pay money to some people, prophet. If you meet any man and he's telling you before you see him, uh, pay this consultation, just know that he's not a prophet of God. Hmm. If you meet any church where you go, and then you are asked to pay something to see the man of God or to receive prophecy, just know that you are in the wrong place. Yes, sir. The prophet of God are consistent with that. They have a good character. They is God. They depend on God. They depend on God for their 
blessings. Awesome. Not on human beings. Awesome. They don't charge people to do God's work. Awesome. They speak the mind of, of God. God. Awesome. Amen. Amen. That acts actually the call of Jeremiah. Yes. I think, and not Abraham. Mm -hmm. I think the call of Jeremiah. That, that yes. text. But, mm -hmm. you know, Father and God, you yes. talked about abiding. Yes, sir. I see a consistency. You know, with that, that scripture, Second King is dealing with Elisha. Yes, sir. Who succeeded yes, Elijah. Yes, the Bible sir. talked about the double spirit of Elijah being resident yes, of him. Yes. Exactly the word he used. Look at First King 17. Now, on Elijah, the teach bites. The inhabitant of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand. That's Elijah. Look yeah. at Elisha, verse 16 of 2 Kings chapter 5. And he said, But he said, As the Lord lives, mm -hmm. before whom mm -hmm. I, stand. I stand. You talked about consistency, consistency. of prophecy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are men who have, you, what was the word you used? They abide in the presence the of presence God. Yes, 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 yes. They are standing somewhere. Yeah. They don't just, you know, it's unfortunate. We've seen people come out to prophesy, mm. and they are coming out from the bed of immorality mm -hmm. from the hotel room, mm -hmm. and they are called pastors yeah, and they yeah, are called prophets. Exactly. But these people we are consistent in standing before, before God. God. Yes, Let's exactly. wonder when they declare mm -hmm. God or not their yes, word. Yeah, like yeah. the words of some prophet Samuel, yeah. Bible said he never fell down mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. I think first thing, first Samuel three eighteen. 18. So child of God, a prophet must learn to stand before God. God. It is in the place of standing before God that he can receive direct from yeah, his throne yeah, of yeah, grace yeah, yeah. and will be able. And then you talked about the acknowledge their inadequacy. Yes, Look yes, at a yeah. mighty man yeah. that Jeremiah turned out to be in the hand of mm -hmm, God. Mm -hmm. But he was conscious of the fact that, hey, Lord, is it me that you want to use? Yeah. Some of us are growing arrogant because of the maybe things that God has enabled us to achieve in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Prophets of God still know that is the grace of God upon, upon their life, that they are only vessels that God is using to reach out mm. to his people, mm. and that keeps them in check. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father in God, Reverend Ezekiel, how is the prophetic ministry compromised in our generation? You know, prophecy is actually one of the fivefold ministerial giftings, yes. according to Ephesians 4.11. So there's a ministry of prophets. There's the office of the prophet. How is it compromised in our generation? You will read First Kings 13, 19 to 22. Can only be termed Second Kings 5, 20 to 25. And then we'll take your response as we conclude. So they went, First Kings 13, 19 to 22. So they went back together. And the man of God ate and drank at the prophet's home. Then while they were sitting at the table... A command from the Lord came to the old prophet. He cried out to the man of God from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord. And have disobeyed the commandments the Lord God, your God gave you. You came back to this place and ate and drank. Where he told you not to eat or drink. Hmm. Because of this, your body will not be buried in the grave of your ancestors. <laughs> ancestors. And after the man of God has finished eating and drinking, the old prophet said, the old prophet saddled his own donkey from him for him, and the man of God started off again. But as he traveled along, a lion came out and killed him. His body lay there on the road. The second Kings five. 20 to 25. Second Kings chapter 5, 25. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian. Why not receive him from his hands what he brought? But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariots to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master sent me, saying, Indeed, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give me a talent of silver and two chain changes of garments. So, Naaman said, please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags. 
with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Geazi? And he said, Your servants did not go anywhere. anywhere. So how is the prophetic ministry compromised in our generation from these two biblical accounts? Quickly, sir. Well, this uh, biblical account, they're all speaking the same thing. Yes, sir. Covetousness. Uh, just in a way of summary, we still have old prophets around us today. People that they will speak both the mind of God and at the same time the, the mind of the devil. Yes, sir. This a young prophet from Judah, a young man of God from Judah, hmm. that God used to do great things. You know, he prophesied against the altar, and the altar immediately God answered and intervened. But as he was going, God gave him instructions. He should not what? Return back from the, the, the same, same way he came. And then he should not eat anything. Okay. And that's the word of the Lord. Converse your stomach. You know? If, if you, any man of God that, that the devil cannot get you through things, money, mammon, material things, you will last long in the ministry. Hmm. So this man, when the children told him that, that look, we saw a wonderful man of God, but he saddened his horse and went to the man and prophesied and said, look, the spirit just told me now that you should eat. And then he, he, the man started eating. As he was Tragic. eating, the same spirit again said, ah, we see people today that they, were, they started very well. They yes, are sir. old prophets. But today, in short, for you to invite them for a place, for the programs, you have to bring one million naira deposit in account. Hmm. We may think that, look, they are doing well, but they are out of God's will. Hmm. Today, Everybody is interested in, in starting his own church. Mm. And he will not answer past the answer prophets. They will tell you some things that you even know that is true. But they have no solution. You mm. know, I was listening to one in the uh, Facebook and uh, the prophet came and the woman was begging for the son. He said, your son is a thief. Get out here. He's going to die by one day. No solution. No solution. You know, it's compromised. Why? Because what is gingering them, what is propelling them, into the ministry is us how much that enters. Whose God is their belly? That's what St. Paul puts Look, look yeah. at uh, Neman. Uh, Gehazi. Gehazi. Who's supposed to take over the anointing of the man of God? But because of covetousness, a man who was standing at the altar, standing, assisting that, such a man that's carried great Double anointing. Double spirit of Elijah. He who was, knows the amount of the spirit that would have been resident on He was only interested. You. As the man of God was telling their man, look, I'm not going to collect anything from you. you I'm, sure, I'm sure Gazi was crying. I said, my, this, what's this the is my yoga. He went hmm. back and he, know, he knows the truth, but he spoke lies. He said, mm -hmm. my yoga said, just give me. You know? Hmm. And he came back. Instead of receiving double portion, he, he received ended up leprous. Being leprous. a leprous. Hmm. May God help us so that we will not end up like Gazi and all these false prophets. They are going to give account before God. No matter what you are doing, are you a minister? Are you a prophet? Are you telling the people the truth of the word of God? Or are you just prophesying to get something from them? Telling them is well with them when you know that they are not even making heaven. And, and these things find a common expression. Maybe when we see some of these big men around, they come to our churches. We invite them for harvest. And sometimes we are particular about what we can grip out of them, yeah. the project we are doing, how they will support, without first of all making sure that their life is in line with God. You know, God will not, God will first of all receive the man before he receive the gift mm. that comes from a man. Mm. Mm. God will not just accept a man's gift arbitrarily. God will take a man's life. Yeah. And the Bible say that God found Noah in his generation. And if you look at the Genesis account, the Bible says that Noah was a righteous man. Mm. So God will first of all, so we need to, people of God, and, and some of us that God has been, has, by virtue of grace, placed us to oversee people. Let's not just be interested on what we can get out of Let's speak the truth to them, no matter who's us, is God. It's God. John the Baptist went to King Herod and said, it is not right of you 
to take your brother's wife, Herodias. He went in for it, but he confronted power and spoke truth to it. Child of God, God is warning all of us. It's important that we do that. There's something I would like us not to miss. And that's we say chapter 2 of verse 13 as we conclude. Why we need to obey prophets. Let's look at Hosea chapter 12, verse 12. That scripture just came to me as I said. Hosea 12, verse 13. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. That will say by a prophet. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was preserved. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet he was preserved. Child of God, I don't know what represents Egypt in your life, even as we speak. May the word of the Lord that is coming via the mouth of our fathers in God, prophets of God, mouthpiece of God, bring you deliverance Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your preservation in 2022 is guaranteed. Amen. Amen. I will say by a prophet, he was Jacob was preserved, Israel was preserved. Father and God, I'd like you just a short word of prayer. There's someone out there that needs preservation. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're afraid. You don't know what your health is turning into. And you're saying, ha, will I continue in 2022 like this? Babu said by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. Father and God, just a short word of prayer that that life will be preserved. Mm -hmm. That his health will be preserved even in this year in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray. Lord Jesus, your word says nothing is too difficult for you. Yes, Amen. Father. We pray in your mercy for whoever at this moment mm. Amen. may be experiencing challenges in his or her health. Mm. We pray that your power will restore the health of such persons. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That by your power, those who suffer from one challenge or the other in their health, that they will enjoy good health in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray in your mercy that there will be strength in their lives. Amen. There will be strength in their bone and in their spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And that there Father. shall be testimony concerning their health. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Conclusion quickly. As there are prophets of God, so are carnally minded prophets who are after selfish gain by taking advantage of vulnerable people. Our closeness to God will enable us with discernment to know the godly and obey them as well as knowing the ungodly and refraining from them. You know, that's tragic for me, the experience of that young prophet. Because if discernment was there, he would have known that that old prophet was speaking out of God's injunction at that time. Food for thought. Prophets are God's messengers, not the Messiah. Yeah. The only instrument, they are messengers, they are not the, mess the Messiah. The one who has the message is God himself. The only mouthpiece through which God delivers his message. Memory verse together, Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. I, I have also spoken, spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied, multiplied visions, and used similitudes by the ministry of, of the, the prophets. prophets. We want to thank God for today. We trust that indeed the Lord has spoken his mind to mm -hmm. us. Prophets, like we defined, are men and women who speak in the very mind of God. They are God's mind peace. Yeah. Our Father and God talks about foretelling and foretelling. Mm -hmm. Prophets tell forth mm -hmm. the very mind of God. Mm -hmm. And thank God for the blessings that came our way by reason of this study. We want to also thank God for our resource persons. Can answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. May God to continue to honor his word in your life in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. None of your word will fall to the ground. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Reverend, sir, thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank thank you. You. May God for continue to uphold you. Thank you sir. And lines continually will fall onto you in pleasant places in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Child of God, we see you on this side, same time next week. Keep on living for Jesus. God bless you. Mm -hmm.